Mr. Speaker, I recognize the gentleman from Georgia, member of the House Appropriations Committee, Mr. Bishop. For five, the gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Four and a half minutes. For four and a half minutes? Correct. Yes. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, I support the troops, their families, and those who have sacrificed so much in this war. But like others who have supported the Iraq efforts in the past, I have serious reservations about the President's new way forward. On Friday, this House will vote on a resolution asking members to support our troops but oppose the President's plan to send 21,500 more troops to Iraq. For me, this will be a sobering moment. I've spent many days agonizing over the issue, and I do not take lightly the judgment to rebuke the decision of the President, our Commander-in-Chief. But I have sent off and welcomed home thousands of soldiers at Fort Benning. I've seen the anguish on the faces of families as they watched their loved ones march off towards the uncertainty and peril that awaited them in Iraq and Afghanistan. I've seen the troops return home to those same families, their faces reflecting the elation, relief, and joy of seeing their loved ones safe at home. I've seen the veterans return with purple hearts, having lost arms, legs, and suffering from the mental trauma that results from war and the adverse impacts on their families. I've also stood and listened to taps, played over the bodies of too many who have returned in flag-draped coffins. Mr. Speaker, it is time for a change. The situation in Iraq has become very grave. Like General Schumacher and countless others, I believe we should not surge without a purpose, and that purpose should be measurable in its outcome. Thus far, the President has not set forth a clear marker against which the purpose and the outcome can be measured. Previous increases in troop strength have not brought a reduction in violence or quelling of sectarian strife. Rather, the problems have intensified, casualties have increased, and political situation shows more cracks, corruption, and signs of instability every day. There are those who say we should not oppose the President's plan without presenting an alternative. I think that may be a fair challenge, but there is another way. We need a new strategy that is based on redeployment rather than further military engagement, one that is centered on handing Iraq back to the Iraqis. As Congressman Murtha has stated, Iraq cannot make the political progress necessary for its stability and security until U.S. forces redeploy. To achieve stability in Iraq and the region, we must redeploy from Iraq. Why, you might ask. 91% of the Sunnis, 74% of the Shia want us out. 70% of Americans want us out. 72% of Americans who served in Iraq last year believe that we should be out by now. 61% of Iraqis approve of attacks on U.S.-led forces. They see us as occupiers and want us out. The longer we stay, the more troops we send, the more violence we see, and the more we help recruiting of radical extremists. So we must redeploy, first from Saddam's palaces in Baghdad, then from the cities, the factories, the universities. We must give the country back to the Iraqis and let them govern themselves and rebuild. Next, we must execute a robust diplomatic effort, and we must regain our credibility by denouncing aspirations for permanent bases. We must shut down Guantanamo, bulldoze Abu Ghraib prison. These are black eyes on the face of our international credibility. We must articulate clearly a policy of no torture, no exceptions. Then we must engage dialogue with Iraq and all of its neighbors to promote investment of resources and cooperation for security by the other Arab countries in the region. Most importantly, we need to repair and restore our strategic military reserves that have already been stressed to the breaking point. Because of the large force already in uh, Iraq, Army ground forces here at home are not mission ready. This is because of both equipment and personnel shortages. The National Guard that remains at home is woefully unready to meet their statutory obligations based on natural disasters, wildfires, terrorism, or other threats to the homeland. The large presence in Iraq has drained readiness in equipment Inspired. personnel. May I have 20 seconds? 20 seconds, sir. 20 seconds. 
20, uh, the general is recognized for 20 seconds. The large presence in Iraq has drained readiness and equipment and personnel in the rest of our military. The surge will cost us dearly in billions of dollars in time, and we are desperately needed to repair, to reconstitute and reset our forces to face other significant threats at home and around the world. We cannot stay the course we are on. We must change, support our troops, and our long-term national security by voting for this resolution. I yield back the balance of my time.